Today on Behind the Frame, we combine 3D models, stock footage, and lens flares to create lantern constructs. Ooh. Welcome to Behind the Frame, where you can learn how to make cool props and effects from your favorite movies, shows, games, and more. I'm Scott, so let's get this episode started. Here's the effect that we're gonna be making today. If you haven't seen it already, you can click here to learn how to make the yellow lantern core power battery that Josh built cheap and easily. But let's get into some After Effects action bumper. For this effect, I used three things from videocopilot.net. Now we are not sponsored by Andrew Kramer, but if you're into After Effects, you should probably frequent his site for great uh, tips and tutorials. Link in the description below. So the first thing we're gonna do to create this effect of a camera following this skull construct down a field is to create the moving background. Now we don't have access to fancy equipment that would allow us to do this in real life, so we're gonna cheat because that kind of stuff is tolerated here on Behind the Frame. I started by taking three pictures with my camera and dragging them into After Effects, creating a new composition that's about a half a second long. Now just line them up. Turn the opacity of the first picture down to 50% so we can see exactly where to put it in reference to the second picture. Do the same thing with the third picture. Once the photos are exactly where we need them, turn the opacities back up to 100 and create rectangle masks where each photo ends and feather it a bunch to blend it into one image. Then parent the second and third pictures to the first one. This way we can drag this layer around and the rest will follow. Now move all these layers over so we can make room for a fourth layer. We need to make this a looping background. So we need to take our first picture and duplicate it and stick it at the bottom of our layers. Then just line it up as best you can with the third layer. It's not gonna be perfect, but I'm sure you can find a point where it lines up pretty okay. I mean, it's gonna be moving fast anyway, so nobody's even gonna notice. Parent that to the first layer as well. Now, we select our first picture and slide it over to the start. Keyframe that nasty position, go down your timeline about 12 frames and move it all the way over. Turn on motion blur for the layers and the comp and you have yourself a looping background like on the Flintstones. We're gonna go ahead and render this moving background out. I'll explain why in a bit, but for now, let's go to composition, add to render queue. You can render this out however you want. I just did an H.264, but here's a little tip. Because we're still wanting to work with this rendered out file, you can go to the post render actions drop down menu and select import. This makes it so that once the file is fully rendered, it'll automatically be imported to our After Effects project, which is just a great little time saver. Right click on that file and go to interpret footage main. At the bottom there's an option to loop the video so we can make it as long as we want. Now this option is not available for pre-comps, which is why we had to render it out in the first place. But once we have that set up, we can go ahead and type in any number of times we want it to loop just so it'll fill out the composition that we're gonna be creating. So drag the looping footage in and see how it looks. And I think we're done. Looks pretty good, but just for the heck of it, let's add some skulls. I'm gonna be using Element 3D from Video Copilot so that I can work with 3D models in After Effects in real time. It's really quick, really simple, and they also have a free Halloween 3D model pack which we'll be using to get our skull model inside of here. Now you don't have to work in 3D if you don't want to or if you just don't have the means to. Just green screen anything you want and throw that in there instead. It's a much simpler process. I chose to work in 3D because it offered me more control over how I wanted the finished product to look. So to use Element 3D, we just need to create a new solid and name it Skull, cause you know, that's what's going on that layer. Go to Effect Video Copilot Element and click on the Scene Setup button. I selected the Skull model since that's what I want and I hit OK. As you can see, the skull is ready to go in After Effects really quick and really simple. In the particle replicator area, scale the skull up to around 13 or so and rotate it on its Y axis to 55. Now this will change later, but I needed to see how it's gonna look as we're working on it. Go to the start of your composition, create a keyframe and move the skull backwards. Then go to the end of the comp and move the skull forward so that it looks like it's moving along the scene. Apply a tint to the layer and map the white to a bright yellow and the black to a gross darker yellow. Change the blending mode of the skull to add so we can kind of see through it and it looks nice and bright. Next, apply a glow to the skull layer. 
bring the glow threshold to around 38, the glow radius to 152, and the intensity up to 1.7. Now, it looks less than great, so we're gonna change the composite original from behind to on top. Change the glow colors to A and B colors, map the white to a pale yellow, and the black to a more saturated yellow. And that's starting to look pretty good. So let's start creating some energy to fly off of this thing to make it look cool. First thing we're gonna do is create a new solid and add fractal noise. Change the fractal type to dynamic twist, up the contrast to 200 and the brightness to 10 and the complexity up to 15. Go to the start of your timeline, create a keyframe for the evolution and then at the end of your timeline, bump that up to about four evolutions. That's gonna get it to look all wiggly. Apply yet another tint to this layer and map the white to a bright yellow. Change the blending mode of this entire layer to classic color dodge and lower the opacity to 60%. Grab the pen tool and create a mask around the skull that looks like an energy trail. And as always, feather the crap out of it. I should put that on a t-shirt. Create a second mask around the face of the skull and change that to subtract. That way, the face is showing through all of this energy so you can see it a little better. Feather that a bit too and keyframe the mask position of both of the masks to follow the skull throughout the entire clip. Now I want there to be a little bit more energy in the center of all of this. So we're gonna duplicate our energy layer and adjust the mask to be a little bit smaller. We're also gonna delete the second mask as well. And to add a little bit more randomness, we can go to the evolution settings and bump that forward one evolution on the beginning and the end of the clip. That way it's not duplicating the exact same stuff as the first layer is. Now to give it some more action, we're gonna throw in some stock fire elements I got from Video Copilot's Action Essentials 2. I'll be using Torch Turbulent number three along with Torch Windy one and two. So drag them into our comp and rotate them 90 degrees so it looks like all the fire is shooting backwards from the skull. Just play around with the position and scale until you get something that you like. Then what I did was keyframe the position of the Torch Turbulent layer to follow the skull, then parent the Torch Windy layers to the Torch Turbulent so that everything follows exactly how I want it to. Guess what we're gonna do to these sexy layers now? That's right, we're gonna add a tint, mapping the white yet again to a yellow color. Then we'll change the blending modes of each of these fire layers to screen. Making all of these different elements, like the skull and the energy and the fire, different blending modes, it helps add a little bit of texture to your final product. So now we have this, which is good, but I kind of want to add a little bit of fill to it because it looks a little empty in the middle to me. This is a very simple fix. Just create a new yellow solid that we'll call fill, naturally. Create a very simple three-point mask of the area you want to cover and feather the crap out of it. Then change the blending mode to add and keyframe the mask position to follow the skull accordingly. Now let's animate the skull a little bit so it kind of rotates into shape. Go to about 12 frames in your timeline and in our skull layer, keyframe the Y and Z rotations and change the Y rotation to about 220 and the Z rotation to negative 91. Around 30 frames later, change the Y rotation to one times plus 51 and the Z rotation to zero. And now it's rotating just the way we like it, but I think I wanna add a little bit of a blur so that it kind of forms into shape as it's rotating. So we'll add a fast blur to our skull layer and keyframe the blurriness from 100 to zero over the course of the rotation. And now on to our last big step, we're gonna add a nice lens flare. For the lens flares, I used a plugin called Optical Flares from, you guessed it, Video Copilot. Create a new black solid and apply optical flares to that layer. Click on the options button and you'll be presented with a whole palette of different flares to choose from. I chose this one called Robot Light and then went to this one called Outpost, right clicked on it and selected Add to Current. This merged both of those flares together to create a new flare. Then I changed the global color to kind of a gold color. Change the brightness to 90 and the scale to 150, then change the blending mode of this layer to screen. Keyframe the position XY to move the flare to follow the action. Then what I like to do is animate the brightness from 90 to 50 as the skull is animating to draw more attention to that. Lastly, turn on the motion blur for the fire layers, the flare layer, and the skull layer, and also for the comp. Add some camera shake to make it more intense, add your color correction and letterboxing, and we end up with a final product that's looking pretty nice. Now there's a lot going on here, but the idea is to balance it all out, to create a final product that looks natural. But I think that's about it. So 
want to talk to you guys a little bit about some changes we'll be making to behind the frame. It's getting a little hard to continue to make these on a timely schedule and also pay attention to our actual job. So we'll be moving on to a three week schedule instead of a two week schedule. So what does this mean? Well, instead of doing one week be a prop tutorial and then the next week be an effect tutorial and then just repeat that process over and over again. Instead, we'll be doing one short video that showcases both the prop and the effect so that you guys know what you're in for. That's gonna be week one. Week two is gonna be the tutorial for the prop from that video, and then week three is gonna be the effect tutorial from an effect in the video. Sounds simple enough? Uh, let us know if you have anything to say about the new schedule in the comments below. I hope you guys understand why we're doing it, and I hope we didn't screw up your life for anything. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching this episode of Behind the Frame. Comment below, if you could create anything out of light from the power of your own lantern ring, what would it be? Probably not sunglasses. If you haven't yet subscribed to Nerdsync Productions on YouTube, it's kind of a no-brainer, you guys. Just go ahead and click that subscribe button below for more Behind the Frame tutorials of props and effects, as well as we have a comic book show, Comic Misconception, and also a video game show, Nerds Play, that you can enjoy with your seeing devices. And also the Nerdsync audio podcast is up on iTunes if you want to give that a listen. It'll be new episodes every Monday. But I should be heading out of here because it's like... 3.48 a.m. So if you want to connect with NerdSync on social media, you can find us on all of the great sites like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and even Vine recently, if that's your thing. You can also follow me on Twitter if that's what you want to do with your life. But I will see you guys next week when we show off our first short video that will display a prop and effect that will lead into two future tutorials. See ya. Do your own timeline, what? Click here to see how to build the, see how to build the, like a robot. Week one will be in short and short and short video. That's grammatically correct, yep.